Hello. So far we've used GL draw arrays to draw things like triangles, triangle strips, triangle spans. This talk will discuss a new method called GL draw elements. Uh, you can find this in the textbook section 1.3.4 online, or the software program basic draw modes also shows examples of this and other drawing modes. The, with GL draw arrays, we did the following. We load vertices into a VBO, along with their vertex attributes. And then we call GL draw rays. But one big disadvantage here was that the vertices had to be repeated in the VBO if we needed to use them twice in GL draw rays. So some disadvantages here were uh, to use a vertex twice, you have to repeat it in the VBO. So using a vertex twice means it is in the VBO twice. And, uh, or of course, more than two times requires putting in the VBO more than two times. Another disadvantage is the order of the vertices in the VBO has to reflect the order that the, say, GL triangle strip or GL triangle fan wants to use them, might not be a natural way to order the vertices. So uh, we, we're restricted to putting them uh, in the order that's needed by um, the function GL draw arrays. So these disadvantages can be overcome with GL draw elements. Uh, at the cost of adding an extra array to the structure. So GL draw elements, we use a, another array. Uh, called either the EBO or element buffer object or called a element array sometimes as well. E, that's an E. And this holds indices, also known as elements, of vertices. So the indices of vertices give you the, the number of the vertex in the VBO. And so instead of rendering vertices in the order that they're in the VBO, we render vertices in the order that they're in the element buffer object in the EBO. And follow the indices to see which vertex is going to be is going to actually be used. So this overcomes both disadvantages here. If a vertex is used ex more than once with exactly the same vertex attributes, we only need to store it in the VBO once. Uh, if we can put the order in the VBO, it can be some sort of natural order respecting the geometry of the object and the element array with its in indices then have to be ordered correctly for the rendering process. So let's illustrate this with a small example. So we're going to suppose we want to draw two triangle strips that share an edge. And let's suppose that Triangle, the first triangle strip has vertex looks like this, and the vertices are labeled V0, V1, V2, V3, V4, and the triangle strip looks like this. And the second triangle strip will share that second edge, and here will be V5 and V6. And here's the second triangle strip. So the rendering of these triangle strips is going to follow the following order. This will be the first triangle, the first strip. This will be the second. This will be the third. And you notice we're going across the second two and then so forth. And the second triangle strip is going to start with this triangle, then go to this triangle, and then go to this triangle. So those are the two triangle strips. Now, 
for either the approach with the GL draw arrays, as we've done in the past, or the GL draw elements, as I'm discussing now, the first step is to load the VBO. Step one is to load vertex data into the VBO. So this involves, we do the following. We define an array, C++ array, with the vertex data. But now, unlike before, now we're going to list the vertices in order v0, v1, v2, v3, v4, v5, v6. Okay. And then we call the usual OpenGL C++ commands for this. And I'm going to stop talking for a moment and just write on the board. So the usual commands are we bind the VBO under the name GL array buffer. We load the data from the C++ array into the VBO using the command GL buffer data. We then, for each vertex attribute, such as position or color or texture coordinates or normals, etc., we call GL vertex a trib pointer and GL vertex enable a trib array to tell the VAO where this data is stored in the VBO. So all this is just exactly as before. This is the same whether we're using GL draw arrays as we've done in the past or GL draw elements as I'm describing now. So, but if we're using elements, we do another buffer that's called the element buffer or the EBO. So here I'll show you first the code to set up the e EBO and load the data into it, and then I'll show you how the GL draw arrays commands work. So first the data to set things up. So the first step is to set up the array of elements or indices. I've grouped them with a little bit of spacing so you can read it. The first triangle strip is going to use vertex V0, V1, V3, V2, V4, because as we do the first triangle strip, we specify V0, then V1, then V3, then V2, then V4. The second one is going to use 0, 3, 5, 4, and 6. because it's V0, V3, V5, V4, V6. So we have two triangle strips, each with five vertices, thus having each with three triangles. And you'll notice that, first of all, the vertices come out of order from the way they appear in the VBO. And secondly, that two of the vertices, namely three and four, are used in both strips. And so we don't need to repeat the vertex data for those vertices. We just repeat the indices for those vertices as needed. Okay, and then we give a sequence of commands that are similar to the C++ commands that we used for VBOs that will now load the element array into the EBO. So let me write, write those for you. So what these commands do is they allocate a new EBO, which is just a, we call GL gen buffers. We ask for one new EBO. It returns the name of an EBO, which is just an unsigned integer. Then we, later on in the code, we do a GL bind buffer command, which you'll remember we've used it for other, for the VBOs already. 
here we'll specify that the current element array, GL element array, is the, the one that has name the EBO as generated by GL gen buffers. And then we load the data into that buffer array from the C++ array of elements into OpenGL's EBO array. And we tell it the number of bytes. This is exactly like we did before with size of where to read the data from. And static draw means it try to store it in the GPU because it's not going to change very often. And later on in the code, we're now ready to render things using GL draw elements. So now instead of calling GL draw arrays, we call GL draw elements. And let me write down the two GL draw elements for these two triangle fans. So this will be in the render routine. So later on in the code, whereas the code above was written in the initialization code, there'll be two calls to GL draw elements. So what this first call to GL draw elements does is it tells that it's going to draw a triangle strip. It's going to use five vertices. The elements, that is the indices, are stored as unsigned integers. And we're starting at byte number zero in the EBO, which is corresponds to this place in the array. So now the rendering is just done. We look at these, the zero, the first, the third, the second, and the fourth members of the VBO, and we use that to render the first triangle strip. The second triangle strip is rendered similarly. And here's the GL draw elements command. It again is drawing a GL triangle strip. It's using five vertices. Now it's going to be 0, 3, 5, 4, 6. They're still, the elements are still unsigned integers. And the starting point in the array we, is specified in bytes. So it's five times the number of bytes per unsigned integer because we're skipping over five unsigned integers to get to the, to the first uh, vertex or the triangle strip. The void star is because we need to pass in a pointer to it, a sort of generic pointer. And uh, so that's how this works. So for more examples, take a look at the basic draw modes program and the section of the book that I mentioned earlier. And that's it for this presentation. Thank you very much.